Greetings, it is I, Tantus Narvan Jacobin, Lord and Emperor of the Jacobin Empire, and welcome. It is time to continue my discussion on the Pathfinder role-playing game system. Well, where we left off, we had been talking about, of course, intelligence items. Today we're going to finish up talking about intelligence items, and then start to talk about cursed items. Well, intelligence items. Beyond the special powers they might have, and the special purpose they might have, they might have a dedicated power. A dedicated power is a special power a magic an intelligent magic item has specifically for the purpose, the special purpose they have. That is what it is used for. Now, this is again determined at the creation of the magic item, the intelligent one. And this power is unique that it should reflect the purpose. It should be a power, this dedicated power, that is dedicated specifically to the purpose of the magic item. It should feel like it fits. There's, of course list in the book you can roll you can choose come up with one on your own it is important to note this is the only power an intelligent magic item can withhold from a user using basically if i have an intelligent magic item and i am doing something that it doesn't want me to do with this special power especially since it is dedicated to the purpose I'm not using for it it can choose to withhold that it can prevent me from doing it. There's nothing I can do to keep to use this power if the item itself doesn't want me to use it. All right, let's talk about ego. Ego is a combination of measuring the very power of a magic, intelligent magic item, and also it measures its force of personality. How much personality, how much want and desire this magic item has. Its ego will be a sum of the modifier of all the various abilities that the magic intelligent item has added together with the base cost. Basically an ego score based upon that. This does not include the cost for any of the enhancements, the, any of the abilities for being an intelligent item. Those costs are left out. Just the base cost of whatever the magic item it would be that this intelligent item is, that added together with the ego modifiers of what you're purchasing, basically the other abilities added on. That gives you the total ego score. Now, ego basically measures about how much your magic item will try to push its basic idealism, its alignment, its purpose. So if you do not match its alignment, you do not match its purpose, you're not doing things for its purpose, you're doing other things that create conflict between you and the intelligent items. That's what we're going to have a problem with. A conflict of effectively egos. When this occurs, of course, the item is going to try to force its point against you while you're trying to resist it and force your own point against it. This clash can definitely occur, especially when, again, the alignment's clash is a big one, when you're not pursuing the special purpose, when it's right there and the magic item wants you to. What you're going to have to do as the owner of the intelligence item is make a will save with a DC equal to the magic item's ego. If you make the save, you're dominant over this magic item. It's really only for a day, but you're dominant over it. It will complain, it will do stuff, All it will go blah, 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 maybe give you some kind of complaint about what's going on, but you can't force anything. If you fail, it's dominant. This only again lasts for a day, but during this time, it basically can force you to make concessions. A bunch of concessions are listed in the book to give you an idea what kind of concessions you might have to give this magic item because it's basically forcing its ego upon you. But these are only the general ones. More extreme cases, you might have to concess more. Now, the thing is also, it's important to note, if it does manage to get dominance over you, this will last for a day or until extreme circumstance comes up. Basically, if you get into combat or something like that, that will be cause major danger to you in particular. It counts as extreme circumstances. There's a few others that you can look in the book to get an idea of what it means to be extreme circumstances to break you, intelligent items grip over you. It's also really important to note, if your item has an ego of 20 or more, it will think itself superior to you. Yep. 
There will be no denying that, so you're going to have to understand that right off the bat if you have a powerful magic item with a really high ego. Now, clashes don't necessarily need to occur. You don't have to be making saves versus ego constantly just because you have a magic item in hand that's intelligent. The thing is, if your alignments match, your personalities match, and you're following the same purpose as it does, well, it's fine with you. It has no reason to push you in any way, because you're doing everything at once and it needs. There is no reason for a clash between you two to occur. That is the circumstance it could happen. Now, it is important also to note, though, that magic items actually can get jealous. I use another weapon, it'll probably be jealous of me using that other weapon, regardless if it's intelligent or not. It might try to force me to get rid of this one or not use it. That's a problem. If I have more than one intelligent item, they'll compete with me. That's going to be just something messed up. They do not like to be with each other. They like to be very individual. They get into problems when more than one thing hurts. It's the same way with the weapon that they get jealous of, that they don't want it around. They want to be your only weapon or only type of item that you have. Same with if you have more than one intelligent item. They just, they're not really good at getting along. Generally speaking, intelligent items like one of two type of people. Either someone that is particularly weak because they can control them perfectly fine. You know, someone that they will easily overpower or someone that is incredibly powerful that will help them very easily accomplish their special purpose. The problem with the very powerful person is they oftentimes will be overpowered and not be able to have their influence. If a intelligent item is in such a way that its ego will constantly be overpowered, it has basically no way of controlling the person, doesn't mean that they're still not going to express their wishes and still complain when the person doesn't do basically what they want. They will still be vocal about what they want the player to accomplish with whatever voice they have. It just means that they're not going to necessarily actually be able to push you to do anything about it. Let's talk about basics of cursed items. A cursed item is an item that particularly has a negative effect to a player. The fact is oftentimes these also still have a positive effect, a good effect, to mix with the bad effect, forcing a difficult decision if you want to basically take on this cursed item and get both effects. These really aren't created purposely. They're usually incidental when something goes wrong. Whether you rushed creating an item, you didn't use enough materials, whatever you did, it ends up creating a magic item. Another way of thinking about it is if I'm making a craft a, che a check basically to create my magic item and I fail by five or more, it's cursed. Many might still have the original function built into them. They might also possibly invert the function, make it a sort of negative effect, or it could be a combination of having a positive and a negative. So if it does tend to still have its positive, it will also still have a, it will also then have a negative situation reflected with it. So those are the two kind of big circumstances you can have with a magic item. Something still positive and the negative or it just inverts whatever abilities it would have to be completely negative. Both can easily occur when it comes to a cursed item. When you're developing the cursed item itself, it should reflect the type of item it has and the type of abilities it has. And you're going to want to make sure it matches very, it matches it logically. It makes sense that this curse is associated with it and you're going to be building it out yourself. Now, that's it for today. I finished talking about intelligent items. I talked about dedicated powers that they have to their special purpose, and I talked all about ego. Basically, your intelligent item's force of personality and its attempts to basically control you to a limited degree, to force you to keep with its alignment, to force you to do its purpose. These are things that a intelligent item will oftentimes do because you get in conflict with it. If you don't get in conflict with it, well, you're fine. It's not going to force itself on you. I did go over a couple more details about this entire situation just because it can get jealous or combative in different ways. Then I went over the very basics of a cursed item. A cursed item, an item that is either has, still has a positive effect and also has a negative effect or just has a negative effect. Regardless, the item itself will have at very least some kind of terrible negative effect that doesn't bode well for your character to have this cursed item. If it still is a positive one, you might still want to use it. 
it becomes a very difficult decision that you're going to have to make, especially maybe if it's a very powerful item that happens to also be cursed. Ooh. In the next episode, we're going to talk more about cursed items, and hopefully then I'll move on to artifacts. But if you have any questions, comments, anything you want to say, anything you think I left out, please leave in the comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe. It's just for the channel, the empire, the work I do. If you want to show some extra support, you can always check out my Patreon. Link in the description below. There's some great rewards there. It helps to improve and support the channel in great ways. But regardless, until the next time, I bid you farewell.